Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. Let's continue our discussion of NCRT Science series. You already know we have reached NCRT Science Class 8. Now in this lecture series, we are basically discussing NCRT Science textbooks from 6th standard. So already the 6th standard NCRT and 7th standard NCRT video lectures are done. Those lectures are available in bilingual format on the channel Study IQ IAS. Here we are discussing class 8 and we are doing a chapter by chapter analysis. I hope you remember what we discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we spoke about friction chapter 12. What did we understand? We understood the definition of force of friction. We also discussed characteristics of force of friction. What does it depend on? And we established that friction force is independent of the area of contact. Right? We also discussed that friction is a necessary evil. It is good also, it is bad also. We can reduce friction by lubrication. We also discussed about fluid friction and what are the characteristics of fluid friction. All those things were discussed. Today, we will move on and continue our discussion. We will talk about chapter 13 that is sound. A very interesting chapter again. What are we going to understand here? What knowledge will we gain? We will understand what is the meaning of sound. We will understand characteristics of sound waves. We will understand how humans produce sound and how do we receive those sound? How do we respond to those sounds? Some sounds are loud. Some sounds are low in intensity. Sometimes we like music. Sometimes when you go to a factory, it becomes noise. So what is the difference or distinction between music and that noise? At the end of the discussion, we will also talk about noise pollution. So very interesting chapter. Stay till the very end. Let's begin. But if you are a UPSC civil services aspirant, you have just a few hours to enroll for our program that is batch 7 which is starting from 25th May. The question is why should you enroll? It is the most comprehensive program for UPSC civil services preparation. Because study IQ will be hand holding you from your prelims till your interview. It's a prelims 2 interview batch. If you clear your prelims 2024, the expenses for your mains residential program will be completely taken care of by Study IQ. In this program, there are mock interviews planned. There is one-to-one -one mentorship, group mentorship, current affairs program. There is mains answer writing program. There is already prelims test series included. All these things at 29999. And if you want heavy discounts, you have to use my code Rahul Live whenever you check out from our website or from our app. Do it soon. I'll see you in the class. Let's talk about sound. See, sound is a very important part of our lives. Sound is very important for us to communicate. In fact, that is what we are doing right now. I am speaking that sound is reaching to you. Somebody might be listening from earphones. Somebody might be listening directly from the device, from the laptop or from mobile. How sound is produced? My vocal cords are active right now. That's why the sound is produced. And the sound is reaching to you. Regarding that, we'll talk when we speak about ICT, Information and Communications Technology. So, sound is very necessary for us to communicate, to explain our ideas. We used to wait, right? When we were in school, we used to wait when the hour will end, when the class is going to end and then there would be a small bell. And as soon as that bell hits, that means your, that class or that period is over. So, now time for lunch, now time for PT, time for physical training, right? So, some sort of sound is used for communication. We, we receive it, we perceive it and we respond to it. Now, in this chapter, we will understand how this sound is produced, how exactly sound travels, why do we like certain sounds and why do we think that something is noise? How do we distinguish between these? Because we will understand certain characteristics of sound. Based on that, we will say, okay, this is music or this sounds like music or this is noise. Right, let's begin. First things first, what is sound? How is sound produced? Remember, sound is always produced by a vibrating body. Very important, sound is produced by a vibrating body. Now, regarding vibrations, we already discussed in, in our class 7th, we understood vibration is what? Vibration is a to and fro motion. So, sound is nothing but a to and fro motion. Sound is produced by some vibrating material and this sound or this vibrating material, it transfers energy to the neighboring atom or neighboring molecule. 
So what is sound? Sound is basically a form of energy which moves in form of vibration. So as soon as I produce sound, so what am I doing? I am producing this sound. My vocal cords are becoming active and the vibration is now transferring or it is being transferred through air and it is reaching till you. Again, through the ICT, that, that is technological aspect. But if I have to transfer my sound from here to here, what is happening? I am speaking the vibration that is happening in the vocal cords. It is, it is transferred to atoms and molecules and it is reaching to point B. Now, you must have seen these sounds, right? You must have an experience with tuning fork. Tuning fork. Now, you simply hit the tuning fork. The tuning fork is going to vibrate and it produces certain sound. It is also used to find out the frequency, right? When you reach your class 11, class 12, and if you have already finished it, you must have known that we can find the frequency of the tuning fork using a water column by changing the height of the water column, right? You must have also seen guitar. Now, why I am telling this is there might be a doubt in your head. Sir, you explained that you are speaking, your vocal cords are making sound and that sound is being transferred as vibration. But I cannot see it. With tuning fork, yes, you can see. With guitar, yes, you can see. The string is vibrated and the sound is produced. Same thing with drum. Now, I hit a drum. This, the, the membrane of the drum, it is going to vibrate and the energy is transferred. But many a times, we do not see things vibrating. Say, for instance, in this example, in most of the cases, whenever sound is produced, say if I if I stretch a rubber like this and if I give a vibration to this rubber, then I see the vibration, I see, I hear certain sound also. But many a times I do not see vibration. For example, if you if you hit this dish, if you hit this dish, then a sound is produced. But in this dish, there is water. Now you can see the water, certain certain kind of waves are formed. You can observe that. But many a times, if you do this particular experiment, I'm quite sure you did this during the COVID-19 pandemic. I do remember, I think somewhere in March 3rd week, 3rd or 4th week, what happened was there was an initial lockdown. After that, one evening, everybody started to bang the plate and the spoons, creating sound, right? You must have done this. You have created sound during, during that COVID-19, right? Right. Apart from that, some other instruments, for instance, say, I do see vibration here. But do I see any sort of vibration here? I may not. So the idea here is vibration is taking place somewhere. You can see vibrations and some at some places you do not see vibration, but you can feel them as sound because sound is produced. So basically sound is a form of energy, a form of vibration which is transferred from one place to another place. Now, the next question, how do humans produce sound? See. I told you when we reach adolescence in boys, in males, Adam's apple develops. Now, Adam's apple, it houses larynx. In females also, larynx is there, but Adam's apple is missing. So, humans have a voice box or larynx. And this larynx, it consists of two vibrating vocal cords. These are, these are the vocal cords of humans. Now, these vocal cords, whenever they vibrate, they produce, they produce sound and that is how we communicate now the question is sir how exactly these vocal cords are are vibrating these vocal cords vibrate because of the air that is pushed out of lungs that means because of the movement of air these vocal cords they vibrate and a sound is produced so when lungs force the air through the slit of these vocal cords a sound is produced that's why you must have seen that whenever Say you run a kilometer and you come back and I tell you to speak. You, you will not be able to speak. Barely you can say a few words because you will be gasping for breath. And breathing is required to produce that sound. Air is required for production of that sound. And this vocal cord or larynx, it can be simply created. Right? A small experiment is given here. Take two rubber strips of same size and stretch them. And when you stretch them, you blow through those stretched rubber tubes there is a sound which comes out very similar to the stretching or vibration of that rubber our vocal cords also work or you can also do it with paper take two papers take two two pages and uh, and just blow blow in between those two pages you will hear some sort of a fluttering sound or some sort of sound that is how your vocal cords also work now remember in humans the length of vocal cord it differs in males 
the length of vocal cord is around 20 millimeter long approximately 2 centimeter in females it is a little less it is about 15 millimeter long children have much shorter vocal cords that is why we see a difference in voice or difference in sound that is produced by humans men have deep voice because of longer vocal cords women have a, a little shrill voice because of shorter vocal cords and children have much much shrill or high pitch sound they produce now imagine a child crying continuously you must have experienced that that is a very high pitch noise sometimes it gets irritating isn't it because the pitch of that sound is very high because the vocal cords are quite short now that is how we produce sound the next question sir how sound reaches from one point to another point right how sound propagates see remember this point sound always needs a medium for propagation because sound is a transfer of energy and is a transfer of energy through a waveform and sound is a longitudinal wave remember when i say longitudinal wave when i'm speaking what is happening as soon as i speak the sound is making the atoms or molecules in the air to vibrate and how are they vibrating they are continuously vibrating in a to and fro form that is why it is a longitudinal wave and when i say longitudinal wave it it undergoes compression and it undergoes rarefaction it undergoes compression it undergoes rarefaction that is how a sound wave looks like right but remember sound always requires a medium for its propagation that is why if you get a chance if you go to space you will see that sound does not propagate there in space in vacuum there is no sound propagation so sound needs a medium sound travels now right now sound is traveling because there is a medium air which is already available here sound can also travel through water because water is also a medium liquid is also medium air is also medium sound can also travel through solids because solids are also medium and if you if you dissect further you will understand the speed of sound it also varies from medium to medium now since solids have atoms or molecules which are basically clubbed together very closely that means the energy can be transferred in a very fast way so sound travels much faster in solids than liquids and in air it is the slowest or in gas it is the slowest please remember if i talk about the speed of sound the speed of sound it differs from medium to medium speed of sound is highest in solids so you must have seen this or you must have done that experiment just take a, a, a metallic rod take a metallic rod or a metallic scale and keep it near your ear and give give it a small small hit or a small vibration you will hear a very loud a very loud sound or we must have or you must have i have already done that experiment during my childhood you must have also done it take two cups and tie a thread now that thread is a solid if you're if you're speaking from one end almost say say 5 10 meters also you can listen to that voice very very easily that that thread should be a little tight why because through the solids sound travels much faster then next comes liquid first is solid next liquid next gas so if i create a mcq where i ask you sound travels fastest through which medium i give you options copper i give you option oil i give you option nitrogen what would be the answer for this the fastest would be of course from through copper because it is metallic it is solid so questions like that can come right so we understood how is sound produced how sound propagates now next how do we hear or how do we perceive sound it's exactly the reverse process of how sound is produced i told you sound is produced because of a vibration of vocal cords how are you able to hear this now this vibration or this this sound it reaches my ear and my ear has a funnel kind of a shape you do see now this part is actually vestigial you do understand the the outside ear these are cartilages even if you remove it you can you will be able to hear it these are vestigial organs okay they just give you a good appearance but the main main ear or its constituent is way inside your ear it is called eardrum now what is this eardrum this eardrum is like a membrane a very very sensitive membrane i told you sound is a vibration this vibration is going to reach till your eardrum and that eardrum is going to vibrate and once that eardrum vibrates the signal then reaches to your inner ear and ultimately reaches to your brain which interprets 
that sound. So it's a reverse kind of a process where the the energy sound which is traveling as an as energy it is reaching to your ears which is vibrating your eardrum and your eardrum is now transmitting that to your brain which helps you to perceive that sound understand that sound that is why we always say your eardrum is very very valuable make sure you do not insert anything in your ear if you do that your eardrum would be damaged and if the eardrum is damaged then it becomes very tough for us to hear right now we understood how do we hear now hearing sometimes sometimes we like certain sounds we like music right sometimes you go to a factory you don't like the sound it's kind of irritating why does that happen let's try to understand some features or characteristics of sound wave as i told you sound is a longitudinal wave sound wave is a longitudinal wave it basically travels as compression and rarefaction it travels as compression and rarefaction. I can simply transform it into a waveform also. Now, this becomes a basic waveform, right? And sound also can be transformed to this basic waveform. And it has basic characteristics like amplitude, a wavelength, and the frequency. Now, what is the amplitude? When I, when I draw a wave, I am just drawing a single wave, right? Pardon my drawing here. It may not be exactly symmetrical, but for understanding purpose, we'll get it, right? Now, this is a single wave form. Now, in this single wave form, this is the neutral area. Now, the height of this wave is called amplitude. And this amplitude is responsible for the loudness of the sound. This complete length from this particular point till here, this is called a wavelength. And it is denoted by lambda. It's called wavelength. Right? Wavelength is the distance of one full wave. That means, a distance of one full crest and a trough. It is called a wavelength. Apart from this, there is one more characteristic called as frequency. Now, frequency is number of oscillations or number of waves or number of such waveforms in one second. It is called frequency. Frequency is measured in terms of hertz. The reverse of frequency is the time period, time for one cycle. Time for one cycle is called as time period. A reverse of that would give you the frequency. So, when I say that a wave completes, say, 50 oscillations in one second, that means its frequency becomes 50 hertz. So, these are characteristics. Now, why did I discuss this? Because I want to understand the meaning of loudness and pitch. And they are connected to these characteristics. Sometimes you say, you are speaking very loud or you are speaking very in a low voice, low intensity. Loudness. Loudness. This depends on the amplitude. Remember this. Loudness always depends on amplitude of the sound wave. Loudness is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude of the vibration of the sound that is produced. Meaning, if I have a waveform, if I have a normal waveform, something like this. That means, if something is very loud, that means its amplitude is very high. Similarly, if something is not very loud, if something is of low intensity, then its amplitude would be very low. And this loudness, we generally measure in terms of a logarithmic scale. It's a scale of 10. Now, generally what we say, the standard unit of loudness of sound is decibel. And it is judged that, see, right now I say this is loudness number 1. And if something is loudness number 2, that means loudness number 2 would be 10 times loudness number 1. Why? Because it is logarithmic scale, decibel. That's why it, the scale goes in decibel. And this is a table. Whenever we breathe normally, I am breathing. The breathing sound is about 10 decibel, very soft. When I whisper in someone's ear softly, it is about 30 decibel sound loudness, 30 decibel intensity. In our normal conversation right now, it is somewhere around 60, 50 to 60 decibel the normal conversation that we are having right now. If you are in a busy traffic where people are honking, where you are able to listen to so many uh, so many noises or loudness of vehicle, then it is around 70 decibels. And if you are in a factory, it is around 80, 85 decibels. And anything beyond 85 decibels is very dangerous for you. It is irritating. So that is loudness. There is one more characteristic of sound, pitch. Now this pitch depends on pitch depends on your frequency. Now you must have you must have learned some music. Many people they like to learn music. They like to learn the notes. 
those nodes are depending on these pitch. Pitch is connected to frequency. All right. That means if this is a normal waveform, if this is a normal waveform, if I say something is high pitch, high pitch sound, high pitch sound means its frequency is very high, meaning in one particular second it is traveling more. And if something is low pitch, that means its amplitude, remaining things will be same. But in one second, it its frequency, its frequency is little less. So higher the frequency, higher would be the pitch. Now let me give you an example so that you understand more clearly. And from our day-to-day -day examples, say, say I see I, I go to a zoo, I see a lion which is roaring, right? Lion roar. Ah, lion roar. You must have seen or you must have heard, right? You must have seen the lion and heard the roar. That roar is actually very loud. It is low pitch. It is low pitch. That means its frequency is low, but its loudness or its amplitude is very high. That is why it's a roar. Ah. But when you sleep at night, you hear a very high pitch noise of a mosquito. That mosquito is seldom loud. It's not loud. Because its amplitude is very, very low, but its pitch is very high. The sound is quite irritating. Right? I hope you get the idea that loudness is connected to amplitude. Whenever a sound is very loud, that means its amplitude is very high. Probably its frequency is a little lower. If something is loud and high pitch, it will be very, very irritating. Probably you must like it. These days, there is a very blurred line. People go to loud concerts. Now you will see. Very high loudness and very high pitch also, right? I, ho I hope that you, these things are uh, clear to you, right? As I told you, the pitch is basically connected to frequency or the shrillness of the sound. So, a drum, it produces loud sound. Whereas a whistle, it produces high pitch sound. Clear? High pitch sound means it reaches, it reaches to far away places, very high pitch sound, sometimes it irritates you also. Clear? Right. Now, next thing, what are the audible sounds that we hear? For humans, the audible range, I want you to remember this categorically, this is some, this is some data or some facts though you need to remember. Human hearing capability is between the frequency of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That means 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Please remember this. Our capacity is to hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 20 khz. This is the audible range for human ear. But many animals, they can hear other, other frequency sounds also. Some animals can hear sounds higher than frequency of 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz also. Dogs have this ability. That is why sometimes you must have seen police or, or, the, or the people from animal welfare, they must be using some sort of a whistle. They are blowing, but you are not able to hear anything. Probably the animals are hearing that. Apart from that, the ultrasound equipment, right? Ultrasound sonography, etc. is done. They use a frequency which is much higher than 20,000 hertz. So, our hearing capability, I want you to remember this, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Clear? Now, I told you there are certain sounds which you love. Music, music to your ears. But there are certain sounds which are irritating, which become noise. And all that depends on the characterization. All that depends on your characterization. So, do you enjoy the sound produced by horns, buses or trucks? No, that is basically noise. Right? But you do love music. Sometimes you like loud music also. That's why I told you, these days the lines are blurred. Some people go to concert, they enjoy the concert. For some people that might be very loud. But remember, noise is something which irritates, which is not pleasing to you. And music or normal kind of sound is something which is melodious. Which is melodious. That's why the, the loudness and the pitch of musical notes is pleasing to our ears. Whereas the sound of horn, the sound produced in factories, it's irritating. It is called as noise. And this noise harms us. These days, world has become very loud. There is too much of traffic. There is too much of population. You see, when you go on road, there, if there is traffic, people simply start honking. It irritates people. That is called as noise pollution. If you continuously keep on hearing that noise, it leads to a lot of medical problems as well. 
it leads to sleeplessness it leads to anxiety it leads to hypertension which can create some other problems to you as well some other health related issues apart from that your productivity also goes down so that's why noise pollution is something that we need to control and if if we continuously hear that noise, it may lead to hearing impairment. It might damage your eardrum as well. So, noise pollution is something that we need to curb. Especially, you must have seen certain signs where no honking signs are put. Outside the hospitals, outside say religious establishment, outside the schools, etc. They say no honking. Why? Because people are studying and we do not want to disturb them. People are resting. We do not want to disturb them. People are meditating probably. We do not want to disturb them. That's why noise pollution ban signals or no honking signals are seen. Noise pollution has become a very critical problem these days. And we can control it by using some control measures. How do we reduce noise pollution? We need better traffic management. We need to move towards electric vehicles right now diesel vehicles petrol vehicles they make a lot of sound so electric cars can be better create smooth surfaces if we create smooth surfaces sound would be reduced we have to create certain landscapes which can absorb sound we can create brake blocks for trains we can create certain noise barriers building have to be designed in a much better way sound installation or sound proofing can be done in buildings soundscaping can be done we can change our driving styles. People can become a little patient. I think that is going to solve a lot of problems. Apart from that, industrial areas or industries, factories, they have to be far away from residential areas so that at the residential areas, there is no noise pollution. So something like these can be done. Urban level planning can be done. We are talking about smart cities. We are talking about Amrut. So in Amrut, we need to inculcate all these things, all these principles to ensure that noise pollution is curbed, noise pollution is reduced. All right. So that's the end of this particular discussion. I hope it was interesting for you. We understood different facets of sound. If you have liked this video, you can always follow me on my social media handle at the rate Rahul Sai222. If you have any queries, any, any suggestion, feedback, complaint, whatever it is, you can always reach out to me on IG. I do respond on Saturdays and Sundays. Thank you for watching this again. Jai Hind.